How's it going, everybody? My name is Rosanna Rangel, and this is Group B's Case Analysis on Reed Supermarkets with team members Lizette, Michael, Matthew, and Russell. So, with the assumption that everyone already read the case, here's just a quick overview of the situation at, at hand. Uh, Reed's was established in 1939 in Kalamazoo, Michigan, with strong presence in the Midwest. 192 retail stores as of 2010, and a image of high-end quality organic focused foods. Um, it's an evolving market with competition from every end. We're losing customers to low end, uh, less expensive competition like Aldi, Dollar General, and those big box stores like Costco. Right? Um, they're trying to do the one-stop shopping. We're trying to grow the, our market in Columbus specifically. The question is how? Uh, we st start with the SWOT analysis. The question is why? Right, we're able to look internally into our strengths and weaknesses in order to change or build a strategy to adapt that so that the competition doesn't get a leg up on us. Right, And we look externally at our threats and opportunities because that gives us a chance to look at those and develop a strategy and get ahead of it, making sure that we can change those opportunities into strengths and create a buffer against our threats. Right, And that's how we create a competitive advantage. As you can see here, there's quite a few in our strengths, high quality, wide variety of products, largest market share in Columbus, high value area, or just established brand. And our weaknesses, we have a high class perception, which is what our image is, but it also works against us. Our cost structure isn't the most beneficial or best for the consumer or ourselves. And there's constant threats from different markets. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me from uh, different brands coming in, uh, big boxes like Costco or the lower end like Dollar General. And then the opportunities, there's so many that we can build upon that we can turn those into strength as long as we get ahead of the curve, right? There's constant economic growth in Columbus. There's private lab labels within the organization that are constantly growing that you can expand on. And they're just a continuous, healthy, conscious consumer. And that market's growing substantially. There's all the other ways that we can branch off into the market and grow as a brand, you know, like delivery innovations or just marketing strategies to be able to attract new consumers and change those weaknesses. A little more into the details as we go along. Um, so our strengths, high quality, uh, a variety of products. You see our, our quality index is up there, and you can see that in the graphic where we stand against some of the other competition. Whole Foods is kind of our competition main competition, but there's a few others. Um, we are well established, as I said previously, in the Columbus market with the highest market share at 14%. How do we retain that and how do we grow with the constant threat of others coming in? And this is just overall higher growth, higher income area that we can tap into and how do we obtain more of those customers? Our weaknesses, as um, you know, we're priced high. That's our perception. We need to either be true to our identity or find a way to adapt. Um, that we ran a dollar special program that was a bit confusing. It, it went against our image of a higher and higher quality. Like we're not trying to compete with the low end, but that was an effort made towards that. Um, our we're not our operating profits aren't as high as dollar stores, or we our structure doesn't allow for that, and that's something that we need to adapt for, or we need to change. Um, our threats, right? Our customers aren't. They want low cost, they want it now, and they want to get decent quality, right? How do we change that perception of what they want to being who they want? Uh, we have big box stores that are one-stop shopping. Do, how do we compete against that? We can't compete price-wise or in terms of overall product quantity or quality. How do we build a strategy against that? And then constant increase in regional competition. There's, there's people coming in and they're gonna take a piece of that pie, right? So how do we retain ours? And the opportunities, this is where we need to focus on and turn those into strength in order to get that increase in market share for the coming years and buffer against those threats, right? There's constant economic growth. So there's gonna be money flowing into this economy, right? So when people shop where, how do we get it to our doors? There's private label brands, so we expand that, right? Like that's something we can focus on. There's many brands that have their own and they go across a variety of items from you know detergent 
to their own brand of paper towels, right? And then focus on this market of healthy consumers, right? How can we appease that market? How can we be the place they come knowing that they're going to get great organic, high quality products that's healthy for them, right? How do we show them? And that's through the other opportunities, right? We're changing it through marketing strategies, right? How do we get to their phones? How do we show them that this is where they need to come? Where the convenient location that they might pay a premium for, but they're going to get everything they've asked for in terms of high quality premium services as well, right? Whether it's, you know, del curbside deliveries or at home deliveries of their premium meals or something along those lines. And now I'll let my colleague take over the financials. Thanks, Ro. Hi, everyone. This is Matt, and I'll be discussing the financials of the case, as well as the strategy that we believe that Reed's supermarket should take for 2011 to help meet, meet their market share goal of 16% for the year. Uh, looking first at their income statement, we see that their total revenue for 2010 was $660 million dollars with a gross margin of 22.7%, that was $150 million, an operating profit of 2.1% of $14 million. This is what constitutes their 14% market share. Now to go from 14% to 16% market share, the revenue is gonna to have to increase to $752 million, and if their gross margin stays the same at 22.7%, this will be 170 million, with an operating profit of 15, or correction, $16 million um, at 2.1%. So this is a pretty big jump, uh, approximately $94 million of uh, sales increase. And with 25 stores, this is approximately $3.8 million per store. Uh, this average revenue increase is usually one to two points annually. Uh, this For 2011, this is going to require a 13.9% uh, revenue increase. Overall, this is a pretty lofty goal, but we think it's possible if Reed's follows the strategy that we propose over the next few slides. Uh, looking at this strategy, we're going to start by saying the REED should leverage its pre-existing strengths. We already discussed these in the SWOT analysis. Um, we believe their strengths and the opportunities that they have will be best suited um, to, to, to continue to work with those um, to, to meet their goal. Next, we also want REED to eliminate the dollar special program. We'll get into the financials of this over the next few slides, but it does not make sense for them to keep this program. And if anything, it's hurting the REED brand image. Finally, there's a few initiatives that we have laid out that are budget friendly that we believe Reed could use to capitalize on its, on its existing customer base, as well as expand that customer base even further. So first we'll talk about how Reed's can use its pre-existing strengths to meet its 2011 goal. Uh, we know that Reed's average customer is older and more affluent than the standard supermarket customer for the area, and they come to Reed's for its, its quality and service that it provides. Uh, they want a high-end customer experience, so we say maintain the Reed brand. We don't want to cheap out, and we want to continue to offer the high-end customer experience that, they, that our older, more affluent clientele have come to know and love for many years. Um, next, we also say that we should continue to expand its lines of quality products it has available. Um, one way to do this is by expanding those private label lines that are lower cost and have higher margins. Overall, this will be cheaper for reads to produce, but will help us continue to generate sales uh, with those products. We also say, based on the current health and fitness trends that have been developing over recent years, that reach should expand its organic and health food selections. The affluent customer has more money to spend on these products, so this would be beneficial to both Reeds and the customer to have more of these products available in the stores. Finally, and this is more of a long-term plan, we say that Reeds should further expand the Columbus area. We know that this hasn't been budgeted for twenty for the twenty eleven year, uh, but we say that because Columbus is such an high, is such a high income area compared to the average area, um, it's a perfect market for Reeds to continue to grow. We also know that Aldi is expanding in the north and west sectors of Columbus, so we want to challenge our competitors even further. And we say that over the next three years, we should open two new stores in the Columbus area in those north and west sectors. Uh, we expect that this will produce above average growth as opposed to the expansion of the past two years, uh, which has produced no additional, no increased margins that we know of. So continue to expand over the next few years uh, in the long term, we, we believe will also help keep, help Reeds create and maintain that market share that they're looking for. Next, for the dollar special program, we know that this has increased foot traffic by 3% of what stores, but really, if we look at the financials, what is it costing us? Uh, the average product price is $2.70. The dollar special price is only $1.50. With keeping with the same margins we already talked about earlier in the financial section, uh, this gr the gross margin with the dollar special goes down to negative 39%, and the net operating margin goes down to negative 77%. Reeds right now cannot afford those losses, so we say that they need to eliminate the dollar special program 
um, especially when a lot of the customers that come in for it are what we call cherry pickers, or customers that just come in to purchase the dollar special items and leave without purchasing some of the other items. So this completely defeats the purpose of us using the dollar special program to draw more customers into the store. We also believe that this kind of muddies the read brand. Uh, the brand that we discuss is known for quality, um, quality items and, and being a quality store overall. And we don't want to muddy that brand further because people are not looking for cheap when they come to Reeds. And we don't want to give the impression that any of our items are cheaper or, or low quality or anything like that. So we say overall, eliminate the dollar special program. Finally, here are some initiatives that we say that, we, that could be used to capitalize on our existing customer base. Uh, for example, we have some community outreach projects like Project Go Local, um, as well as healthy eating initiatives, 5K for the Food Insecure, um, partnering with local animal shelter, and offering those locally sourced mom and pop products and produce to help show that Reeds is more than just your average super, or supermarket, and they're very interested in their customers as people, um, and we want to just show more involvement in our community in general. We believe this will get more foot traffic in and increase our sales. Uh, we also think that Reeds could advertise as more of an artisan grocer um, by offering by showing that we offer these unique and hard to find items and quality products that an artisan grocer would normally have. Uh, so for example, we have three art, three different types of caviar. Things like that are hard to find in a standard grocery store, so advertising that is a great way, way for Reeds to differentiate itself from the competition. Also, we could offer high class dining experiences like international cuisine tastings, wine and cheese pairings, cooking classes, things that use Reed's products in the recipes and then feature those recipes for the customers to purchase those products um, from Reed's. Finally, we, offer, we think that Reed should offer a valet shopping experience where people can order online, the staff will stock the cart for you and have it ready for you at checkout. It's an awesome in customer convenience and is a great way to draw Reed's new Reed customers in that are looking for the most efficient and most convenient way to shop. Um, so here's some, those are some issues we have in mind. We feel that they're very budget friendly. Um, and here's Michael to kind of discuss where we think this will go over the next, uh, over the next year and how we're going to meet our, and how we think that these will meet our market share goal. Thanks, Matt. To conclude, we believe the Reed supermarket team can hit their 2009 projections of 16% market share, $94 million in profit and 5,800 more customers, but they must follow these guidelines. One, they must get immersed in their community. Big chain market chains, such as Wegmans, have already immersed themselves in their local communities, providing over $100 million in scholarships since 1984. Reed supermarkets can sponsor local sports teams, host community charity events, and even sponsor a weekly farmer's market for local food producers. Wegmans has already embarked online, and Reed must do the same. By providing, like Instacart, where customers that cannot make it to the grocery store can still get their groceries. Three, we could provide some BOGO deals on big name brands. That will provide more foot traffic for each and every store. Two, cutting the dollar special and implementing more private labels. This will cut and save on our margins. And three, keeping up a superior shopping experience. This also is Reed's hallmark. We cannot diminish this hallmark and we should also Incorporate more events such as interactive displays, sample Sundays, and keeping our associates very attentive to every customer that goes through our stores. This will conclude Bruce B's analysis. Thank you. Have a good night.